Thank you very much. Welcome everybody at the opening event of the exhibition Russian War Crimes. This is an exhibition that was first shown in Davos uh, during the World Economic Forum. And at that exhibition, we showed these images, the film that you will see later, in what was formerly known as the Russian House. And now, without further ado, the first person that I would like to present to you, the head of the Office of the President um, of Ukraine, Mr. Yermak. Good evening, uh, Madam President, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, Your Excellencies, dear ladies and gentlemen. Uh, true freedom, it's nothing but justice. There, there, it's no justice, there, no freedom. The German poet, Joan Gottfried Same knew his from personal experience. But history teaches that his for, this formula is also valid for the nations. Freedom and justice always walk side by side. Today, we Ukrainians are fighting for our freedom and we want justice. But want is justice, it's not victory for those we who defend their land. What is justice if not punishment for the, those who have come to take in a way? Without justice, without these punishments for the aggressors, the world will not be free. Fear will uh, reign over it. And because of this fear, evil will become stronger. So the world needs justice. At the scale of Russian war crimes in Ukraine, it's outstanding. Since February 24, Ukrainian law enforcement officers have recorded over 40,000 crimes related to Russian aggressions. More than 26,000 of them are war crimes. And this is only the data that we already know. Daily shellings of the peaceful neighborhoods, mass murders, torture and the rape, mass the de deportation to Russia. We still have incomplete pictures of Russian invaders' crimes in the occupied territories. So far, we know some facts only. For example, that we born or cover the, the concrete numerous bodies of our civilians to hide the evidence. We still don't know exactly how many uh, tens of the thousands of Mariupol city resistance was killed by Russian shells, bombs and rockets. How many died due to the lack of the medicines and food while the city was blocked and how many there tortured to the death of simply shoot. And this each step of our soldiers, eastwards and southwards, with the each village or city they liberate, we are preparing for the terrible news. We are afraid that a new tragedy will get known. We are afraid that the world will have to learn new names, new words, scarlet than butcher. So I will not talk about our death toll just because it will by definition by gravely underestimate. But I will tell you about what shocks me the most, about how Ukrainian children suffer. They were supposed to start the new school year last week but many could not do it. Almost 400 of our children have died in the hands of the Russian occupiers. And over 700 have been injured. 270 schools have been completely destroyed by Russian shelling. 2,405 educational institutions have been damaged by now, and this is are obviously not the final numbers. Can you imagine the scale? 
Russia is terrorizing Europe with the artificial energy crisis and trying to create a food crisis. Now these terrorist states is blackmailing us, the, or us all with, in the nuclear disasters, shelling the largest nuclear power plants in the Europe and disrupting this, its work. There is a specific person behind these crimes. On the hand, there are direct executors, Russian soldiers and the officers. Those who have raped and murdered, those who have given and executed criminal orders. But this is only the tip of the icebergs. The main uh, culprits are those who have started this terrible war against Ukraine. The skeptics repeat phrases about seeming impossibility of bringing them to the justice. They are talking about the impossibility of executing the court verdict. But in the meantime, they remind us that the last trials of these scales were held as, a, as far back as 1945 was there Nuremberg and Tokyo tribunals. So history is uh, in our sides. The hand of justice can reach out to the executioners of the nations. The war with Russia is waging against Ukraine is the largest act of the armed aggression in the Europe since 1945. And the civilized world should give it in a fair assessment. If we don't, if we do not uh, to do it together, Moscow will indelibly try to repeat it again and again. Regimes of these kinds cannot stop themselves. Inability to punish Russia will mean the uh, rights of the forced triumph of the other force of law. Everywhere in unpunished Russia will show other potential aggressors. It's possible. You can commit any crimes against humanity. You just need to be strong enough. You just need weapons of mass destruction. No matter if it is oil or nuclear warhead. What next? The world will get in the abyss of lawlessness. Evil must be punished, and to this end, international law must work. Our goal is a fair trial and legal redistribution. Time will, te will tell how it will be happen, but justice cannot be stopped. The very fact of the international special tribunal preparing in the indicted and ensuing arrest warrants will be an important step to toward our goal. Our goal. The more active and united we all are, we are faster. We will achieve the result. Speaking about Russians' responsibility, we mean it's been uh, twofold: the responsibility of states and the responsibility of the. Russian individuals, citizen, we United Nation International Court of Justice, the European Court of Human Rights, and arbitration can determine state's responsibility. And here Ukraine is already working, in particular for the office of the uh, general prosecutor. The International Criminal Court in The Hague can prosecute the genocide crimes against humanity and the war crimes. But it's also important for us to ensure the individual's responsibility of Russian leadership for the most serious initial crimes, the crime of aggression. It is often called, like a mother of the old crimes, the supreme international crime. This is a crime that has absorbed all the other international crimes. Accumulate evil of the world. Ukraine initiate, initiate 
and has been working for the almost half of the year of the creation of the International Special Tribunal, which will try all the top leaders of the Russian Federation for the military aggression against our state. It is this tribunal what should announce suspicions to K representatives of the Russian government, issue warrants for where detention and pass legal sentences. Proving the fact of the crime aggressions committed against Ukraine will be the base for the sentence. It could be either life imprisonment and significant prison terms. And the actual execution of the sentence will take place, place as soon as the defendant appear on the territory of the states they joined the treaty, uh, the treaty on the establishment of the International Special Tribunal. There are the days to do this. Either international agreements between Ukraine and other states, or agreements with the United Nations, or agreement with the European Union, or the Council of the Europe. On September 14, a political decision of the Cabinet Minister of the Council of the Europe regarding joint support for the creation of the Special International Tribunal is expected. I'm sure it will be a significant step toward justice. I call on the Council of the Europe, do not hesitate and fight resultively and on the side of good. Russia has carried out all types of the aggression specified in United National General Assembly Resolution 3314 or 1974. Wherefore, we in judgment can be adopted several months after the start of court work. Why do certain European officials do not want actively work of the creation of the International Special Tribunal. What do they delay of the creation? Some of them maybe believe that what did they keeping a way for the negotiation with Russia. Some are trying to convince that the International Criminal Court in The Hague is enough. However, it's, it's not the case. First, Ukraine actively cooperated with the International Criminal Court. The creation of international special tribunal regarding the crime of the Russia aggression against Ukraine will not affect the investigation of the International Criminal Court. It will only complete his work. Secondly, Russia has violated all basic international rules by which the world has lived since the World War II. The reaction of the international community to the Russian aggression against Ukraine in 2014-2014 turned out to be extremely mild, and the mindless hand entailed the full-scale Russian invasion now. The lack of proper punishment for such large-scale crimes will indelibly lead to new, no less bloody war. It's time to correct all mistakes. They must create a wild complex of the institution that will establish a new international security system. The International Special Tribunal is the first step of this path. They should be followed by international agreements on security guarantees for Ukraine, unification of the sanction against the aggressor, and reform of key international institutions. No one will be escape responsibility. No matter how big and strong the aggressor states may seem. One of the, of the Britain best minister of the 19th century, Benjamin Disraeli, said, justice is truth in action. It is our duty to act, constantly fight for justice for the freedom of humanity to choose the future without fears. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Yermak, for these very important words.